Thank you. Uh, Kieran Taoiseach, as you know, I have been warning about the potential for this energy crisis and our exposure to elevated prices for years now. Sadly, what I was warning about has come to pass. The present energy crisis has disrupted our economy and driven inflation on a massive scale. It poses real risks to our economy as we are, like it or not, dependent on oil and gas for the functioning of our economy. Even with a massive renewable build-out, we will still need gas as our backup fuel for electricity. We still don't know how the Ukrainian war will pan out, and we have Ill, seen ill-disposed actors sabotaging critical gas pipelines like Nord Stream in Germany and Baltic connectors in Finland. Combined with the terrible situation between Israel and Palestine, our present gas storage and supply arrangements look completely inadequate and are also in breach of EU legislation regarding gas storage. Despite my consistent warnings, nothing was done apart from the government kicking the can <laughs> down the road in the hope uh, that none of their bad policies would catch them out before leaving office. In the meantime, prices have skyrocketed and we are paying, paying uh, the price for not having a long-term resilient um, energy system. The crisis is hitting all of us, and particularly hard-working families, directly in the pocket teacher. I understand that in the last few days, a number of reports have, been finally, have finally been published by Minister Ryan. It seems that Minister Ryan's department has finally understood that our only option for gas security of supply is a floating storage and regasification terminal. Can you therefore advise the government's strategy uh, as, as far as it is? And by that I mean, uh, why has it taken this government, uh, which hugely paid officials and advisers almost four years, uh, to realise that our only option for gas uh, security of supply is a floating storage uh, regasification terminal? And when will this piece of critical infrastructure be put in place to ensure our national energy security? Where will this terminal be sited? As you know, I have mentioned the potential of Cork in the past number of years in this stall for this uh, floating terminal. And what is the uh, com uh, competence w uh, within our state uh, bodies for the development of a floating storage and regasification terminal. And can you assure me that such a terminal company, which will either lease or purchase a terminal, will be Irish owned and controlled? Thank you. Thanks, um, thanks, Deputy. Uh, the future of energy in Ireland is renewable. Um, that's the safest, the most secure, and the cheapest way to provide for energy needs in the long term. Renewable energy backed up by interconnection to Britain and to Europe, uh, and also mass battery storage here in Ireland. And that transition is very much underway. It's happening all around us, all over the country. The wind farms, the battery storage in the Midlands, the interconnector between Ireland and France, very much underway uh, and very much the future. Um, in the meantime, yes, we're still going to need oil, uh, and yes, we're still going to need uh, natural gas. Uh, we have good oil storage already. Uh, about a 30-day supply uh, if we need it, uh, some of that in Cork, as you know. When it comes to natural gas, we have essentially two sources. Uh, one is the carb gas field off Mayo, which will run out, uh, and the other are the interconnectors uh, between Ireland and the UK. And in light of what's happened to uh, interconnectors, um, gas pipes and telecommunication terminals around Europe in the last year or so, we've had to revisit our policy. Uh, because we've seen uh, gas pipelines destroyed and damaged, not just in Denmark, but also between Estonia and Finland. And that has caused us to rethink our policy. And we believe that reliance on the interconnector from the UK uh, is too big a risk uh, and a risk that we have to mitigate against. Um, we haven't come down definitively on whether it'll be a floating gas storage or a fixed one. Uh, that is still open for consideration. And we've asked Gas Networks Ireland to do further work in that regard. Uh, so it could be floating uh, or it could be fixed um, and we have to um, do a bit more work uh, led by Gas Na Networks Ireland uh, in that regard uh, and that will be done over the course of the next, um, the next six months. It will be expensive uh, but the cost will be uh, spread uh, over a prolonged period of time uh, in the form of, of, of a levy on bills similar to the one that we have uh, for Nora uh, when it comes to uh, oil, petrol and, and diesel storage uh, and whatever we do will be state-led. Uh, and the government has made that decision. Um, that doesn't mean there isn't a role to play for the private sector, whether it's through public-private partnerships, whether it's through contracting the expertise that we need, uh, which we don't have in the state sector, um, but it will be state-led uh, and state-commissioned. 
Thank you uh, very much, uh, Tisha, for your reply. Uh, Minister Eamon Ryan has uh, confirmed, uh, the Minister for Energy and Climate has confirmed, the new facility, which will likely cost hundreds of millions of euros to be built, will be funded by a new levy on consumer gas bills. Now, I know that the Green Party love taxing the Irish people. They seem to have a, a fierce habit of that. But I, I presume, uh, Tisha, you won't agree with that. Because, you know, we look at the fuel and the taxes that are on there already with carbon tax. Where's our carbon tax money going to go? Why can't that be put into a, a, a facility like this that I fully agree needs to be put? And the floating uh, gas terminal that I asked uh, for uh, previously, and I felt it was a necessity, and we pleaded with Minister Ryan, uh, who ignored our calls at that time, we felt that it could be positioned off a car. Where will, again, uh, I ask you, will this terminal be sited? Uh, and we need to know that here before us in the Dalton. And, and you're saying it, it, the structure will be uh, started and it will be constructed in the next six months. It certainly will. But the Irish taxpayer cannot pick up the tab on this, Taoiseach. It cannot keep picking up the tab on every issue uh, of concerns. So you, you have carbon tax, you have no tax. What else are you going to put on the ESB and the gas bills to the ordinary people to pay for? They can't be hit, uh, hit on this again. So use your carbon tax. You, you impose this on the people. It's hitting mo mostly the, hurting the people of uh, rural Ireland, the, with most parties inside here uh, agreeing to it. H pay for this Thank floating terminal the with the carbon tax money that's there already and not hit them again with another bill onto the bills, levels onto the bills they're already paying that they can't afford to pay at this time. Please to Thank conclude. Thanks, um, thanks, Deputy. I, I, I think it's interesting, bordering on, on comical, that the deputy who opposed the carbon tax yeah. is now yeah. calling on us to use the carbon tax, yeah. which he opposed, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to pay for gas, to pay for gas storage. It just, it just, you know, just doesn't make. Just anyway, look, I won't even, won't even go down that road because it's just, just so, so absurd. Uh, I don't, don't even think, think I'll go down that road at all. Um, yeah. st storage, storage has to be paid for. Um, nobody's going to store a huge amount of gas for us that has to be burned off um, uh, or brought into the system every couple of months uh, for free. So storage has to be paid for. Uh, the proposal is that the user of gas will pay for the storage. That makes sense to me. The deputy is proposing that it should be paid for by taxis against. That makes no sense.